OS Wonderbread. It's Stanley. It's his final statement about relationships and who is that person and what is life about and uh, the questions that he asks himself. Uh, and I think he's asked himself you know, his whole life. Tom Cruise made a movie years ago with Nicole Kidman as his wife, and she had cheated on him with a fucking soldier. It was one of those oh. movies by that director that fucking Eyes died. Eyes shut? Yes! Eyes Wide Shut is one of Stanley Kubrick's most contested films. Upon its release, the director's swan song received lukewarm reception from critics and complaints from admirers that the finished product was not Kubrick's ultimate vision, which is easy to understand given that the film ended Kubrick's career on a somber note, and the director was notorious for making cuts and changes to his films even days before their premiere. Recently, Eyes Wide Shut has made somewhat of a cultural resurgence. Fondness of the film has grown over the years and there's been an increase in those analyzing the movie, hoping to decipher potential underlying messages that Kubrick may have scattered throughout the film. I mean, when, when he said, look, there's two things you can say about this film. Um, it's about sexual obsession and jealousy. That was it. That was sort of the standard press release. Um, so that's what we said for a year and a half when people would ask us. And now when I look at the film, I think it's so much more than just that. The story of Eyes Wide Shut originates from the 1926 novella Dream Story. Kubrick's rendition followed the central tenets of the book and modernized them. When held side by side, they are remarkably similar. The more notable omissions primarily dealt with cultural and religious aspects of the book which, to the disunion of eventual fellow screenwriter Frederick Raphael, Kubrick viewed as inconsequential to the plot. I really liked Stanley. I mean, it was a great, great moment when I was asked to uh to write uh, the movie for Stanley Kubrick. And, yeah, and I mean it. But I was 60 something. So I wasn't actually knocked over like I had been when I was uh, working with Susan Giuliani. Um, I wanted to please him, and I think I did actually. Um, I didn't know he was a dying man, which he certainly was. Dream Story caught the filmmaker's attention during the production of Dr. Strangelove as Kubrick had been seeking material specifically dealing with human sexuality to explore for his next project. He eventually read the book in 1968 and soon after bought the movie rights, deciding it would join the docket of films he sought to adapt. Dream Story would have a long and tumultuous hibernation and development hell for over 30 years, evolving as each decade passed. At one point in the 1970s, Kubrick eyed a comedic interpretation of the novella featuring Woody Allen as the lead Bill and Mia Farrow as his wife Alice. But with time, those plans had fallen apart. In 1980, Kubrick pegged Steve Martin for the role of the protagonist, having seen something in the young comedic actor from his work in the Carl Reiner film The Jerk, released a year earlier. Not long after doing a tour of the UK and hitting the talk show circuit, Martin received a call from the director to arrange a meeting. It's been said that Stanley Kubrick was dead set on casting Martin in the role, which to those around him seemed unusual given that the script at that stage had taken on a darker nature. The 80s draft of Dream Story was something closer to the final screenplay, but it also retained the originally intended comedic tone. The two had met for lunch at Kubrick's estate where the director went over the film's materials at length. In spite of Kubrick's infatuation with the source material and Martin's interest, when all was said and done, not much progress had been made on pushing Dream Story into production. I had come to London to do my stand-up act on television, but then I got a call from Stanley Kubrick the next day saying I'd like to meet with you. And so I went to his uh, you know, estate. Yeah, and uh, he, he was just, he, he pitched me what became Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, but and this was, was 1980 and it wasn't made yeah. until 1999. Right. With Tom. It was based on a book by Schindler. Right. And uh, I think the book was called Rhapsody. It had different titles and different translations. And it was an you know, enigmatic book, a beautiful 
beautiful book. And then, of course, you know, it never. Okay, but did did anything happen? Did he call you up and say, "Have you read the book?" Did you call him back and say, "I think this would make a great movie"? You was know, I didn't any... know that I was supposed to call Stanley Kubrick back. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, huh? What did you, you know? think was going on? I went to his estate, and we had dinner. We played chess. Oh, that's right. That was the other part. Yeah, we played and chess. And he's very good about that chess. Very good at chess. Yeah. yeah. Are you pretty good? I was. He okay. beat me. Let's put it that way. From the 70s into the 80s and then the 90s, Stanley Kubrick had jumped project to project. He had gone from Barry Lyndon to Napoleon to Full Metal Jacket to the Aryan Papers. And then, finally in 1996, it seemed like everything was finally coming together on what would become Eyes Wide Shut. Stanley Kubrick had to sit down with then-celebrity couple Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise about starring in the film. After agreeing to get the both of them to temporarily relocate to the UK for principal photography, Warner Brothers gave the film the green light. Production on Eyes Wide Shut began that year, and as the cast and crew came to find out, it would become a three-year ordeal. The troubled production was met with several rumors and controversies peddled by the press. Kubrick's meticulous nature behind the scenes was reported as conflict over scenes of deviancy. The press maligned the film before its release and even its completion over fables of scenes featuring sexual violence and borderline pornography. To make matters worse, Harvey Keitel quit midway through shooting due to impatience over Kubrick's directing quirks and perfectionism. That, of course, added gasoline to the publicity fire. What was the problem with Kubrick and Eyes Wide Shut? Well, he was a genius. Um, Mr. Kubrick did some things I objected to. I didn't like, I thought they were disrespectful, and I won't be disrespected by him or anybody. And if any actor can help it, they should. As time went on, people began to wonder, Will Eyes Wide Shut even be released? Well, it's been 985 days in the making, and it's D-Day for Cruz and Kidman, as Eyes Wide Shut is officially wide open. To see it or not to see it, that is the main question buzzing in Hollywood today. The expanded shooting schedule had began to cause anxiety among members of Warner Brothers production staff. Featured actor Alan Cumming, for example, had to audition six times before officially landing the role of a bellhop. On March 7, 1999, Stanley Kubrick passed away, only days after screening a preliminary cut of the film for Warner Brothers and the film stars Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Though the draft was complete, the film itself was not. The scoring sessions, for example, hadn't even been completed by the time of his death. On July 16, 1999, Eyes Wide Shut was released nationwide, with many debating the quality of the film as well as its meaning. It's disappointing. What? In the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Conflicting reviews from two super critics. It's D-Day for Eyes Wide Shut, while Roger Ebert calls it a masterpiece. Good Morning America's Joel Siegel reveals to access Hollywood today, it's a bad, bad movie. Moreover, it was hotly debated whether or not the final version of the film was indeed a genuine director's cut. Though the general consensus has fallen on the side of, this is the version Kubrick intended, there is a body of evidence that, when met with the logistics of how post-production typically works, would lead one to believe that had Kubrick lived to see the premiere, that film may have greatly differed from the one released. This notion has prompted some editors to take the movie into their own hands and even attempt to craft a more director-accurate cut of the film. What, what would you want to talk to Stanley Kubrick about if given the opportunity? Oh my goodness. Um, I think I... Well, it's paradoxical, because what I'd like to know is how he would have finished Eyes Wide Shut. When I started looking at the reality of how the film was finished and at what point he died, even though I think the studio appropriately put out the film as mm -hmm. his version of the film, I realized it was a little bit early. As the negative criticism surrounding Eyes Wide Shut continue to dwindle with age, the questions surrounding the film may never go away. Thank you for watching this deconstruction. If you'd like to see more or contribute to the creation of future documentaries or anything else you see on this channel, consider going down to the description below and visiting patreon.com slash lowres. For a dollar or more a month, you will be credited at the end of every published video as a content producer for the brand, in addition to receiving behind the scenes information, scripts, and videos. Patreon.com slash lowres.